Join us today as we show you what it's like living out of a van in Astoria, Oregon. Good morning from Astoria, Oregon. I've always wanted to come up here because this is the home of the Goonies, as well as a few other movies. What was it? Kindergarten Cop. Kindergarten Cop and Short Circuit. Oh, I love Short Circuit. She just watched Short Circuit for the first time. Awesome movie. We are gonna go visit the film museum later, but today we really wanted to spend showing you what it's like coming into a town with a van, some of the things we go through, what we're looking for, where we park, uh, what we do with Leo. So join us today as we show you what it's like living out of a van in Astoria, Oregon. Welcome to the Safeway parking lot in Astoria, Oregon. Somewhere over in this general area is the Goonies house. Hey, you guys! I love that movie. So this Safeway actually has specific RV parking. And there is the van. Good morning, Leo. <laughs> Sorry if this is a little close, but... <laughs> it feels really close. Maybe you can take a step back. There you go. So what are we up to today? Uh, well, I've been reading the mile by mile guide that I picked up uh, for the Oregon coast and there's a lot of fun things to do in Astoria so I'm looking forward to exploring the town and see what we find. I need to get my Goonies history in. You gotta get your Goonies history in. I did hear that right over in this direction you can see the Goonie house from down here. So are you gonna do the truffle shuffle? I can do it right now. Well. I really wanted to do it in front of the house, but you're not allowed up there anymore. I think the best I can do at this point is if I walk over, I read, in front of the hotel next door, I can see the house from down there. No truffle shuffle. I don't think the people driving by would take too kindly to that. All right, see you in a bit. So there is the Goonies house. Joe's gonna stay behind in the van with Leo. I'm gonna head into Safeway, grab a couple of grocery items. They've got grapes on sale, 99 cents a pound. That's looking. We ended up spending the night at Safeway because the rest area we pulled into Oregon last night had a posted sign for no camping and no overnight parking which was unexpected. So we had to think on our feet and ended up driving into Astoria really late last night. Got in about 11.30. We saw all the RVs parked at the Safeway and we decided why not, let's just park here for the night. We ended up falling asleep to the sound of sea lions, which is a new sound that we're not used to. Usually it's a lot of traffic or trains Actually, I don't think either of us got a very good night's sleep. All packed up. Okay, drawers latched, skylight down. Yep. Okay, let's do this. Let's do I'm it. driving. You're driving. Did realize the keys are still back there, so let me go grab those. Would be good to have the keys. <laughs> Leo, you ready to go? Keys. Here you go. Thank you. I love doing that. It's so much <laughs> fun. Are you thinking we just look for a parking spot? Since it's already noon, let's drive into downtown, see if there's any parking because there have been a lot of cars going into town. It is Saturday. It is Saturday. If we can't find a spot or we can't find a spot big enough, we can drive back out here and either street park or park back in this lot. There is the Columbia River. One of the questions during the live stream was, do we find driving the van a lot easier than the Class A? Driving the van into a small town a lot more relaxing for me. Uh, less to worry about, more parking options. The streets here are pretty good, but yes, I find driving the van much easier going through a town like this. It's a 
National Register Historic District. The number one thing I try to find is a shaded spot. Like this one would be perfect for us if it was available. So all of this is two hour parking. Three ton weight limit ahead. I guess I'm gonna have to move. One of the challenges with having any kind of RV is being cognizant of weight restrictions, other restrictions that towns have. We went to one place in Oregon that you weren't even allowed to park your van if it was over a certain height or a certain length. So all of these things you have to be on the lookout for. Oh look, I wonder who that is. I think we got a good spot. Yeah. There's no shade, but there's also no parking restriction. Yep, I think we're good. All right, I'll get things buttoned up if you want to grab Leo. Sure, sounds good. Hey bud, oh, you gotta wait for me. Whenever we park someplace, we always put the sunshades up. We leave the vent open, crack the sunroof, and maybe a window or two to keep it nice and cool in here. Uh, but we always put the shades up so we don't get people looking inside the van. That's part of keeping things secure so we don't really worry about it as much. All set? Yeah. But there is always that concern. We could come back and the van may be broken into or it might not be here. Yeah. So it's a little bit scary when your whole life is in a van and you just park it on the street and leave it for a few hours. But this is part of van life. And nice thing is we don't own much, so not very much to replace. <laughs> this is very true. The only downside would be losing all the video footage and then we don't have a YouTube channel anymore. We're all buttoned up. Let's go explore Astoria. Oh, one other thing we do when we leave the van is we make sure that the step comes in once the door closes. We do have the option to leave it locked out, uh, but we make sure it retracts when we park somewhere on the street. Let's leave them a note. Well, I don't have a pen, do you? We can put our we can put our card on our window. Actually, I'm out of cards. Guess who's not out of cards? You. And who has a pin? <laughs> Somebody's better prepared than I am. Should I give them a limited edition card? Yes, the three S's. Hey, It does. Did read up on it. It's a dollar to hop on and hop off, or two dollars to ride all day. Nice. Not a bad deal. I don't think dogs are allowed. That means you, Leo. We keep seeing these vans around town. They have crazy stuff written all over them. And apparently there is a race from Mount Hood to the coast. I don't know, I'm assuming this is the end because they all seem to be here. There are a lot of vans in town, so ours doesn't stick out whatsoever. There are a few derogatory terms on a lot of these vans. We won't repeat them on this channel. It says, hey kids, free lollipops. That's just wrong. <laughs> I think Leo's about Friends. done, yeah. Leo, are you ready to go back to the van? He is. A lot of times what we do is when we come into a new town, we'll walk him around, let him see and smell the city. And when he's done, he lets us know, take him back to the van. We put the fans on and everything so it stays nice and cool in there. And then we go and explore. So people have asked us, what do we do with Leo? Well, Leo's gonna hang out in the van for a while. We're gonna go to the museum and a couple other places. And don't worry, it is nice and cool outside, but it's also cooler inside the van right now. Plus we have the option to run the AC for him. We do. Which we don't need to. Yes. So when we're parked on the street and we're not plugged in, we can turn the AC on. We have Volt Start. And Volt Start will kick the engine on in case we start running out of battery power. Charge up the batteries, the AC will stay running. But on a really cool day like today, 
All we have to do is open the vents, crack a few windows, turn the fan on, and it keeps it cooler inside the van because of all the insulation and the tinted windows. So there's really no concern about Leo getting overheated in the van. Another hood to coast car decorated. They're all over the place. Leo and I decided to stop and take a break. It is gorgeous out here, but this cold concrete feels really nice. Doesn't it, bud? This place has a glass floor. You can see sea lions on the bottom, and there's a giant sea lion just laying there, passed out. <laughs> oh, look at the big white fluffy guy. Oh my God, is that a Samoya? I think so. What is it, Leo? As great as I keep saying camper van life is, there are some things that stress me out, specifically when we come into a new town. I used to worry when we first got the van, when we'd come into an area like this, that we wouldn't be able to find a place to park and we'd just be driving around. Since we've been in the van for a while now, that worry has disappeared because we can pretty much get anywhere and we've never had a problem finding parking. I still get stressed when we come into a new town for the first time is to kind of figure out what the culture here is like for vans, um, are there going to be places to park? Are we gonna to have to find a campground or something like that? And that's always in the back of my head. Kate, on the other hand, never gets stressed about that stuff. She gets into a new town. She's like, eh, no problem. We'll find something. Don't worry about it. Why are you getting so stressed? And I think that's the great thing about us because we really complement each other. If I look like I'm in pain, the reason is I pinched a nerve in my neck the other day and it's really been bothering me, so it's just hard sitting here. A lot of people have asked what we do about medical on the road and this is something that's really difficult because when you have a neck problem like this, you have a chiropractor, masseuse, it, people that you can go to and you know. But when you drive into a new town, you don't know anybody. And then the, when you go for a visit, you just can't go for a single visit, walk in, walk out. They want to do the whole examination and everything else. Uh, and that's one reason why I like having the camper van. We can bring it into town and when we got back to the van, I just needed to sit and relax. So we sat, relaxed, got some work done, had a small lunch. Leo's rested, he's ready to go back out. So I think we'll take him for another walk and we won't have to leave him here. Most of the meals we eat, we make in the van. One of the things we love to do is when we come into a town, find what is local, what is the town is really known for, pick that up and make it back at home rather than eating out. Here, they specialize in fish. Well, that was a bust. When we walked into the market, they were sold out of most of their stuff. So it was either buy a whole salmon, which we really don't have room for, or we're gonna have to figure something else for dinner tonight. So, babe, I guess it's up to you. Sardine Saturday. Sardine Saturday. That's our backup. Well, let's see. I, I don't know, that rice dish you mentioned the other night. Oh, with the soy and the kimchi? Mm -hmm. We can so, do that too. Yeah, Kate wants to do this dish. It's brown rice, steaming hot, take a raw egg, mix it through so the rice cooks the egg, then kimchi and soy sauce on top. Maybe a little black sesame. Ooh, okay, I like that. All right. And since we are in Astoria, I think tonight I'm gonna put the Goonies on and watch Ooh, movie that. night. Yeah, let's do a movie night. We can watch the Goonies in Astoria. I love it. How awesome would that be? Let's do that. I saw on the Chamber of Commerce map, there mm -hmm. is a designated RV overnight parking area in the city. Yes, that's the other thing. When we come into a city like this, unless we have a campground, when we leave, we have to find a new spot every night. Um, a lot of times we can go back to the same street or parking lot that we parked on last time. But in the case of, let's say, RV parking where it's very limited, we have to kind of cross our fingers and hope there's a spot for us. If there isn't, we might have to find something else. Or we do stealth camping. Yes, there's always the option for stealth camping if the city feels friendly. There are some towns we've been in that have ordinances that you can't even park an RV in town during the day. Those cities we would never stealth camp. Other places, sure. When we drove through Berkeley, there were RVs parked all over the place and we said there will be no problem here. All right, well, let's go. I guess go. that's why it stresses you out. Yes. 
That is why it stresses me out. He's not happy that we're not getting him a whole salmon. There's you no would room, eat, bud. You would eat it all, wouldn't you? You would eat it all. Just a little pudgy. Just a little pudgy. I like to tease our little guy. He's the fittest out of all of us. He really is. All right, let's get going. We got a close up shop here. Keep the sun out there. The main reason we're out in Astoria is because there's a heat wave in Portland where we were and we decided hey let's escape the heat and go to the coast where it's mid 70s and really nice so that's why we're in Astoria plus Joe loves the Goonies. I was gonna say let's be honest we're really here because of the whole Goonies thing. Well we could have gone to a number of cities on the coast we picked Astoria because of the Goonies but that's kind of the way we travel we just see where the wind blows and chase really good weather. Let's see keep going straight I guess I'll go left up here yes. that should take us back to the main road yep we typically don't make reservations in advance and a lot of times our travel plans change and for those of you who've tried to meet up with us you know that one day we could be headed north and the next day we decide to go east so it's really all over the place but it's different for everybody so once you get on the road I think you'll get a feel for what works for you but what works for us is really just kind of feeling things out and being really flexible. That's the key, wouldn't you say, being flexible? Absolutely. I'm really enjoying downtown Astoria. The area is a lot bigger than I expected. Sometimes you go into a town and it's just a few... Stores. A few stores, maybe, you know, five, six blocks, but this is multiple streets and multiple blocks, so there's a lot to see. I feel like we barely scratched the surface today. Yeah, it's some really cool architecture. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's time for me to get to work. I have to navigate Kate to the RV parking. Let's see if we can find it. Goonies House Vista Point, done. We were, last night we were kind of parked over there. This little symbol here supposedly means that there's RV parking. Overnight RV parking. Yes, it says RV overnight right there. So, let's see. There's plenty of RVs down that way. Yeah, we can go park down there. It might be more quiet down that way. All right, let's do it. Okay. I'll just pull up behind this van up here. Okay. I think we'll be good. Home sweet home. <laughs> Dinner started. Put the inverter on. Cook it on high pressure for 20 minutes. And just set that aside and let it go. Rice is done. Ooh, it's hot. Give it a good mix. You got the raw egg in there? Got to have it ready to go because it's the heat from the rice that cooks the egg. Okay. Drizzle of soy. Please. And kimchi. Yes. A little more. Okay. Perfect. Oh, I'm so, so excited. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. The rice, there's mung bean in there with the like cold, crisp kimchi. It's delicious. No parking restrictions. It's pretty quiet out here, so fingers crossed this works out for us tonight. Let's go take our evening walk and then we can uh, tuck in for the night. Oh, but we are watching Goonies.
I slept really well last night. This street is really quiet. We actually had a neighbor pull in last night in a little class C with their black lab, uh, but very peaceful. I did not miss the sea lions. Did you? No, those things were out of control. We were on the river walk last night and we could hear them. <sighs> Do not miss that. That's the only downside about parking at Safeway is the sea lions. But it's another gorgeous day in Astoria and off to the Oregon Film Museum, right? Yep, my neck's feeling a bit better, so I'm ready to go through the museum and geek out. Kate spotted a farmer's market, so we're headed there with Leo before we go into the museum. Just have to contain my excitement. I do love my farmer's markets. <laughs> that you do. And we have to keep an eye out for uh, loose dogs this time. Yes. I think we oh, go. Look at this Douglas fir. It's it quite was, the tree. It was 230 feet tall. Well, this is the jail that Jake Fratelli escapes from in the beginning of the movie. We have his cell open back there, and there's also memorabilia in the other two cells. Uh, Data's jacket and gadgets are from the movie set, as is the um, sloth mask. Great. Also back in our hot set room, that I'll tell you about in a minute, we have the David that you see just before it gets knocked off the table. We don't have the one that the kids repaired. Great. Thank have you. Have fun. Thank you. Okay. Bullet holes, ORV. Bullet holes, ORV. Bullet holes the size of matzo balls. And of course, being a Goonies fan, gotta make it out the Haystack Rock. Not a bad office for the day? Not at all. I would definitely put this top 10 best offices we've had so far. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous, and there's the whale that's been playing around here all day. He even came into the cove. I think in general, I really enjoy the Oregon coast, because every few miles there's another pool out and another gorgeous scene where you can sit and work for the day. both really love the Oregon, but all good things come to an end. When we checked the weather, we were going to have a solid week of rain on the coast, so we decided why be stuck in the van with all this rain when we can head somewhere else. Looking at the calendar, the California RV show is coming up and we're going to do an appearance there, so we decided to leave Oregon early, head down to Southern California where the weather is a bit nicer and kind of spend some time with family before we go to the show. So that's where we're headed. We're gonna first get out of all of this smoke. Aside from how gorgeous Oregon is, there are two things I'm really gonna miss. One, the fantastic beers they make, and two, the amazing coffee I've had while I've been here. Oregon, good job on those two fronts. I'm going to miss the no sales tax and all the free camping. Yeah. Oregon has been a very fan-friendly state. Oh, and I've loved all the blackberry bushes. They were just at the end of the season. Being able to walk around and just pick those from the roadside, pretty fantastic. I also want to say a big thank you to all of you. 
in one of our older videos, we posted a question asking if we should head to Colorado or Oregon. Well, most of you said Oregon. So this is where we headed and we've absolutely loved it. So thank you again for your suggestions. I'm going to miss Oregon. Yeah, me too. We'll have to come back. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to see the camper van series from the beginning, click right up here. We'll see you next time. Bye.